I want to welcome Will Greenblatt from Out Loud Speaker School. How are you doing, Will? I'm doing great. Uh, and thank you, everybody. I hope you're doing well as well. I'm going to actually talk to you about that kind of, but uh, we're going to get into all that sort of stuff. Um, but I just want to know for everybody who hasn't been to the first two parts of these series, they're available. Craig, uh, maybe you can post a link or, or let people know where they can see the first two. For those of you who don't know me, I'm not really going to go too much into my story today because I'm sort of assuming at this point that most people kind of know in general who I am and where I come from, but just to give everybody who doesn't a very brief background. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Out Loud Speaker School, and we help founders and teams tell powerful stories through what we call a powerful pitch. And I'm an actor by background, a teacher by background, and now an entrepreneur and a, an entrepreneur coach. So that's basically where my work comes from. And I also talk about a lot of other stuff like evolutionary psychology and behavioral economics and all sorts of stuff that I believe fuel what makes a great speaker, leader, and storyteller, uh, and what separates those people from uh, the less great and how you can become more great. So that's basically uh, what I talk about and that's what we'll be covering today. So my company runs uh, something called the Powerful Pitch Program, which I'll give some more information on at the end. We take founders through five steps to developing this powerful pitch. The first one is awareness the science and art of communication. And the second one is articulation. So what to say and how to say it, storytelling techniques, all that stuff. Today we come to action. Action is just do it. Get up there, do it, see how it feels, get all the kinks out. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So act three, scene one, act three is action. Scene one is the question, what is stopping you? So I wanna ask everybody a question and maybe we can pull somebody up if they feel like answering. The question is this, why aren't you making content around your business every day? Can I ask, can I put that out to the group and somebody yeah. can either write it in the chat or hop on, on video? Absolutely. We'll put that in the group. It always takes a second for people to find the chat room and respond. So while they're doing that, maybe you want to go into presentation mode because we can see. Oh, the sure. Yes. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, as long as I keep it. Yeah, I got you here. Okay. Yeah, perfect. That's great. Yeah. And sorry, you know, why going. are the people in the chat room not creating content every day? And I'm not hearing much, but I'm going to throw out an answer mm -hmm. because then um, creating content every day is a lot of work. Right. Yeah, that's a great, that's a very common reason why not to do it. It's really oh, hard. Jennifer's got her hand up. Can you put your yes. um, uh, answer in the chat room or in the Q&A window? It takes a while to get unmute people and get mics working and not working. It takes a while. Perfectionism. I second guess every word. Yeah, huge. That's a huge, huge one. Kristen Linklater, who uh, is the sort of guru of theater actors uh, voice training. So the way that actors train their voice, especially stage actors, she called it the paralysis of integrity. And there's so many ways of saying this, right? Uh, you know, people say uh, prolific beats perfect or perfection is the enemy of done or perfect is the enemy of done. There's so many sort of sayings and cliches that that embody this, but that's a huge obstacle for so many people. So we have uh, too much work. We have perfectionism. Anyone else? Anything else? Uh, nothing yet. Uh, but I think, you know, people are afraid. Like when I say they're afraid to one, put themselves out there. Yeah. Because, um, you know, what if people don't like it? Yeah. Um, and it's, two, that's scary. perfectionism is one thing. But, you know, what if it's not good? What if it sucks? Yeah, like not just not perfect. What if it's really bad? Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so if nobody has anything else, I'll go on. Um, but if anybody has anything else they want to say at this stage, I'd love to hear it in case there's something I haven't yet covered or thought of. Yeah, just stick it in the chat room and we'll mention it. All right, move on. Great. So here are the uh, common ob obstacles that I find uh, through talking to people. So uh, the first one usually is workflow. So this one is more specific and then we kind of get broader as we go down. How do I actually do it? What I find shocking, but really interesting and also great because this is a very solvable problem is some people don't literally know where to start or how to go about it. Like, how do I capture video? How do I take that captured video and put it somewhere? How do I fix it up a little bit to make it look a little more than just a, a shaky selfie video that I shot on my phone? How do I post it? How do I make sure that people see it? All that kind of stuff. So workflow, just not really knowing where to start or how to, how to set something up is a big problem. And then the lack of resources. This speaks to your point, Craig, or perceived lack of resources. I don't have the energy or time for this. You said it's a lot of work, right? 
who the hell's got time for this? You have operations to think about. You have uh, accounts payable and receivable to think about. You have to think about finance. You have to think about payroll. You have to think about employees. You have people to manage. You have uh, invoices and contracts and proposals to write up and send. You have to talk to a million different people. Who the hell has time to do this? Doubts about the importance. Why does it even really matter? Why should I make content? Who the, like social media is for kids and TikTok and all that stuff. Why should I take uh, precious time out of my schedule and do that? And then the last one, which I think is one of the biggest, is the doubts about myself. Who the fuck am I anyways to tell anyone anything? For me, this is the worst. And it's really prevalent and it's really deep. And I believe that it's truly under, under all this other stuff in general. So let's tackle these. First of all, the importance. 82% of the global internet traffic will come from video streaming downloads by 2022. What an incredible statistic. How much of the social media sphere will be dominated by people's videos? Sort of talking heads just like this saying, hey, everybody, this is me. This is what I do. This is my company. This is who we do it for. And this is how it can help you if you're part of that group. Videos especially right now, spreading those on social media. Social media plus videos equals attention. And videos are consumers' favorite type of content to see from a brand on social media. There are so many statistics. I just picked a couple here to illustrate this point, but it the ROI on video online, video content specifically online is massive. There's so much, uh, so many statistics that back this up. So make this video content and put it out because it does work. That's That should uh, deal with the importance obstacle. And then the way to get over the rest of them is a very great catch-all um, principle, let's call it. So this actually comes from Ed Sheeran. I don't know if everybody knows who that is. I assume you do because he's pretty famous. But Ed Sheeran, the, the redheaded uh, British boy, sort of uh, acoustic guitar pop star, he had a great interview where they said, what advice would you give to young singer songwriters? And he said, just start to write songs and record them. The first few hundred you do will be shit, just crap, garbage, rubbish. But that's part of the process. You need to go through that so you can get to the good stuff. And think about it like a dirty tap. When you first open up a tap that has like some dirt and gunk backed up in there, it's just crap water. It's all muddy and dirty and stuff that nobody would want to drink. But after that stuff gets cleared, then you get to the beautiful, clear, clean water that you actually want to drink and will be good for you. But you have to get the crap out first. So that's the principle. So it is going to suck at the beginning. People say, oh, what if it sucks? It should suck and it will suck. And that's okay. It's fine. It's never as bad as you think. And also it is necessary to get the crappy stuff out there first. When I look at the videos that I first started doing, and I really have only been making content for a year or so. But when I look back on it, I go, oh my God, what was I thinking putting that out there? What's wrong with me? I'm, or I'm, I'm being too over the top or I'm too flat. I just have so much criticism, but it was important for me to put those videos out to get to what I can do now. And a, a year in a year's time, I'll look back on the stuff I'm doing now and probably cringe when I see it. And that's okay. That's all part of the process. And it should be like that because it means you're growing and progressing. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? at this stage it's definitely like that if there's any questions about uh opening up the tap throw them in the chat room but it's definitely like that we i'm i don't know but a hundred of these in and i'm just actually putting intro and outros and a little bit of extra <laughs> so yeah. it's actually quality like it's just first of all get it out and then you can actually start making it better and uh that kind of stuff so you just yeah. got to get going and the, yeah, exactly. The sooner you start putting out horrible, embarrassing crap videos online, the better, the sooner you'll get to a point where you can actually really enjoy what you're putting out there and it will really start to move people. Don't wait for it to be good. And don't wait for you to have the best camera, the best equipment, the best lighting, although we'll talk about that stuff in a sec, but don't wait for that. Take a selfie video, point it at your face and put it out there. Say, this is what I'm thinking about today, or this is some problems that a lot of my clients have and here's how to solve that. And we'll look again, we'll look at some things about what you can talk about in a bit, but just start to go open the tap. 
And, and here's some tools for how to do that. That's what we're going to look at. Because really, I find that the more uh, tools you can be armed with before you get on camera, the better. Even though I say, you know, just start right away, which you should, you still, I don't want to just throw you in there with nothing to go on. So that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, so here's act three, scene two. So after we look at what's stopping you, we think about how can you show up on camera? Once you decide to get on camera, how can you show up on camera and be your best self? We have to train ourselves to perform. Speaking, people so often think about speaking as a, as like walking, right? There's no world's best walker that anybody would know the name of. Craig, do you know who the best walker in the world is? I don't know. I just keep in my mind, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken, yeah. <laughs> nobody would know who that is because there's no, nobody values like world walking championships. It's one of those things that we think everybody does it, who cares? It's walking. But walking does not have the same impact on our life as speaking does. Speaking, the way you speak, the way you listen, the way you interact, the way you present your ideas has a huge effect on how successful or not you will be during your lifetime. So why wouldn't we treat it like a skill set and a job and a and a um, something to constantly progressing at. So this is how we do it. Have you ever seen this, Craig? And has anybody ever seen this? The conscious competence model. And I am aware that there's some ty typos uh, on the graph, but we won't worry about that now. I don't think I've seen it quite like this before. Mm -hmm. So this comes from the idea. I don't remember who pioneered it or who's sort of given credit for coining it, but it's that there's four stages of advancing at a skill set and your performance goes up over time. That's what this graph shows. So the first stage is the lack of awareness stage, or what we call unconscious incompetence. It's when you suck at something so bad that you don't even know how bad you suck at it. Once you start doing it, then you get into the awareness stage, conscious incompetence. You're like, wow, I really suck at this. And I know exactly how badly I suck because I've started to learn a bit about this process. Then after a while, you get to the step-by-step -step stage or the conscious competence stage. That's what I think a lot of you might be at right now. It's like when I really focus on what my message is, when I'm calm and I'm present and I've warmed up and I feel good, I can really nail down my pitch and I can really make sure people understand what it is that I'm saying. I can be persuasive. I can be excited. I can be energetic. I'd say a lot of people are either at this stage or just before it, uh, where it's like, well, we've all been speaking our whole lives. We know in general, we know a lot about our business so we can talk about it but we have to really focus and really think about it. But the final stage that everybody should aspire to get to is the unconscious competence stage, where you are so trained in the art of speaking to persuade, to motivate, to inspire, to clarify, to amuse, to engage, all these things that we work on, that you do it at the drop of a hat. Somebody asks you, what do you do? And then they're treated to a fantastic story that they go, oh, wow, that looks so cool. That sounds so cool. Oh, man, tell me more about this. I got this friend you should meet. Oh, I, I know somebody who's right in your target market. Oh, I got to talk to you about this. Let's set up a time to, to have a call, right? That's where you want to get to. Without having to think about it, your body and your mind just go there whenever it's go time for talking about your business. And that takes work. That takes you know, the 10,000 hours or whatever, but it doesn't, the 10,000 hours don't have to start now because you've been working at your business. You've been, you know, doing a lot of the things that we're going to talk about, but you've never done it quite in this way before. So that's what we're here today to talk about. So it comes from uh, daily exercises. That's how we can build up the speaking skills. So once you're on camera, the speaking skills are automatic. And this, uh, we'll talk about this in part five of the series, automation, because this is a big part of it as well. But it's when the camera light comes on, for me, it's this little green light next to my webcam for, and also this red light on my microphone. A lot of us tend to go, oh shit, people are watching. Oh my God, this is a, a big deal. Or, oh my God, I'm about to make a video. This is going to last forever on the internet. I have to be so cool and, and calm and collected and eloquent. Uh, so that throws us off our game. So we need to be trained enough that our good speaking skills can take over even when we are nervous. So what are these daily exercises that can train us and make us feel confident in our technique? So number one is mindfulness. Mindfulness is, I was just talking to my wife about it this morning because she was listening to a podcast about mindfulness. And she's like, mindfulness is just like an ultimate life hack, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, that's, well, that's what I believe personally. And it really is. If you incorporate mindfulness into your daily routine, you'll be amazed at the results in everything. Relationships, your mood, 
your productivity, your focus, your happiness, the quality of everything. Mindfulness is just so important for paying attention and being in the present moment. And we'll talk about it more in a second. Vocal warm-ups. I tell people all the time, you have to warm up before you speak, whether it's public speaking in person, whether it's a meeting on Zoom or creating content every time. But warm-ups are not just for right before you speak. Warm-ups are something you can do every single day to improve the articulator muscles in your mouth, to improve the facial muscles uh, in your eyebrows and cheeks so that you can be smiling and have engaged facial expressions. Your lungs, training the muscles around your lungs and your diaphragm and your intercostal muscles to breathe properly and allow it to take in oxygen and then expel it with your voice in the right way to have resonance and all that stuff. And just focusing your mind. So vocal warmups do all this. It's like a, a, a preparation, but it's also like your daily gym for your mouth and your face and your body and voice. Physical exercise. So not just about vocal, but what are physical exercises you can do to make sure that every day, especially when we're working from home, you're taking care of your body in a way that will help you with your speaking. And then finally, just speaking out loud. You just got to do it. Start practicing saying your ideas. I really, I, I talk to myself in, my, in the house. I walk around and I have arguments with myself to practice this sort of thing, because the more I do that, it's like practicing to get my thoughts out of my brain. And then I come up with something that I like and I actually write it down. But, you know, I sound like a crazy person, but I don't care because it's really, really helpful. And so I, I, I highly recommend this, even if you live with other people who are going to think that you're going through some uh, uh, COVID breakdown. So when can I do my daily exercises? This is another huge thing people ask me. I have no time for this shit. You want to give me some more work to do? Never. I never want to give anybody more work to do for this stuff. This stuff is really important, but it should not be extra work because otherwise you will not do it. So when do you do it? Here's the question. What is your morning like? Craig, what's your morning routine like? Well, honestly, I get up fairly early in the morning. So I'm mm -hmm. up between three and four in the morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, yeah, and I brew a pot of coffee. And... Okay, great. I'll stop you just right there. Yep. What, is the, what are the steps between literally waking up and getting to the po coffee pot? Literally, what are the steps? Well, usually there's a trip to the bathroom first. So great. We can avoid that you don't part. need to be too specific, but that's <laughs> yeah. great. So yeah, but literally, but think about this. So yeah. waking up, getting yourself out of bed, traveling to the bathroom, traveling from the bathroom to the coffee pot, taking the stuff out, taking the coffee out of the freezer or the thing where you keep it, pouring it in. That's a lot of steps. That's probably at least five, seven, 10 minutes, I would, I would guess. Yep. Yeah. In that time, you can do everything that I'm suggesting here. So what are these things like? Well, mindfulness is a big one. Mindfulness simply means paying attention. So a lot of people think that to do mindfulness, you got to go to a beach in Thailand and be able to sit cross-legged without hurting your hip flexors, which I can't really do, uh, and have a perfect dawn wake up and be super skinny and in a bikini. And then that's how you meditate. But that's not the only way to achieve mindfulness. Part of the mindfulness, uh, the way I learned it, was that you can practice mindfulness while doing anything. So brushing your teeth. When you go to the bathroom, Craig, whether you're brushing your teeth or washing your face or simply just looking at yourself in the mirror, the mindfulness practice is, what am I actually doing right now? Okay, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm going side to side. I can feel that action happening in my wrist. Oh, I'm feeling the bristles in my teeth. Uh, the water is a little cold on my gums. Am I breathing? Yes, okay, I'm breathing. And then you're spending the 120 seconds that you're brushing your teeth, seeing how much you can spend that, literally paying attention. Not planning your day, not worrying, thinking about the dream you had last night, not wondering what you're gonna have for breakfast, not saying, oh man, I can't wait till I have my first sip of coffee. Nothing else but paying attention to what you are doing in the moment. That is what mindfulness is all about. And the benefits are when you are talking over Zoom or making content, you are 100% present. What am I saying right now? What is the emotional impact on the other person? Or what do I want it to be? How cool is what I'm saying? And is my face and my body and my voice reflecting that? The only way you can really be in tune with that is by practicing mindfulness. Those are the best speakers, the best actors in uh, the Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance that just aired on Netflix a, a little while ago. 
that Michael Jordan's biographer said, Michael wasn't the fastest, wasn't the best shooter, wasn't the biggest, wasn't the strongest. He just was the most present. He had a Zen Buddhist-like ability to be in the present moment. And that was what made him successful. I can't over uh, stress the benefits of this enough. Physical exercise. You got to have the body. Speaking is a physical act. That's another thing from Kristen Linklater, uh, the, the voice guru. Speaking is a physical act. When you're making video content, look at the difference between this. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm really excited to be here. So uh, a lot of people ask me, um, what's the best way to overcome this obstacle? I always tell them that. Does that look like something you want to watch? Or something that you would click on or keep watching the video on or, or stay to the end of it? Versus this, hey guys, and welcome back. Okay, so a lot of people ask me, what's the best way to overcome this one obstacle? Which one are you gonna watch? Even if you think that's a little too loud or not you or, or whatever, there's one that you're gonna stick with longer than the other. And the big difference of that, it is the voice, but it's also the physicality. It's the hands, it's the eyebrows. And the voice comes from the physique as well. The speaking is a physical act, not just because of your face and your mouth and your hands, but your lungs and your stomach muscles and your, all of this goes into having a nice voice, right? So by doing physical exercise, you pump up your cardio, you get the blood flowing, you start to loosen up your muscles and your voice and your face and everything will be so much better when you do this. So what are the good speaking physical exercises? Because I like to connect it back to speaking and storytelling. Boxing. Boxing is an amazing one. So if everybody, wherever you are, stand up right now, I'd love you to practice this with me right now. And I want to show you something. So stand up. If you have some room, everybody stand up. I have an honor system because I can only see Craig who is not standing up, but yeah, I understand I he's really got his mic. Studio. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to stand up and hold your hands up like this in a normal boxing stance. So when you have a boxing stance, you hold your hands kind of up like this to protect. And this starts to engage your shoulders. You start to feel, how am I doing? And then we do a classic one, two. So the one is the left hand and the two is the right hand. So we're going to go like this. One, two. And you start to bounce around. You have the little boxer stance. One, two. One, two, one, two. We start to feel the blood flowing. One, two, one, two. Good. And now the next one, we're going to start connecting our punches with our words. So we're going to go, hey, and you're going to do the one, the jab. Hey. hey. Hi. 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 My name is Will. Hi. My name Hi, is Mike. Craig. Hi. And the more that you do this boxing and you connect it you are connecting your mind and your body and you're speaking to movement which is all to the good of being a better speaker and you're also practicing emphasizing keywords because notice this hi that's a word you want to hear my name is will will is the word we want to hear so many people go my name is will because they're used to saying their own name, so they drop it off. So with the punching, you practice, my name is Will, and you practice emphasizing your name. Then you have some power behind it. You have some force, you have some excitement, you have some movement, and you practice emphasizing. You can do your whole video content script in a boxing uh, uh, exercise. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today, I wanna talk about finance and then you're practicing punching it what words need extra emphasis what are the key ideas in your sentence what are the sort of things that people need to hear what do you want to have punch to it it's a very you know useful metaphor because the words that you want to punch those are the ideas that people really you want them to hear and remember this is a fantastic thing to get the blood flowing uh, to make you feel like you have some power especially when you've been sitting down all day fantastic exercise yoga can't recommend this enough Yoga is the sort of yin to the boxing's yang. Boxing is high energy, high octane, aggressive, you know, uh, a lot of force, uh, really bouncy. Yoga is more, in general, still, controlled, quiet, you know, self-reflective. Boxing is more about the opponent and, you know, fast power and yoga is almost the opposite. So I'm just going to get everyone to do this. Uh, please stay standing. If, you, if you've if you sat back down, uh, uh, please get back up. We're just going to do a very simple yoga thing. We're going to breathe in. And on the in-breath, we're going to reach our hands up and then we're going to go and breathe out and put our hands back to our chest. Good. You can close your eyes when you do this or you can keep them open. Breathe in, arms up. 
and breathe out. Palms back to the chest. As you're doing this, think about every, pay attention to your arms throughout the whole motion. So instead of just throwing them up there and bringing them back down, pay attention to the, to the sensation and how your arms are moving the whole time and then pay attention to bringing them slowly. So we're moving with mindfulness. This is such a good exercise. People always ask me, how can I get better at using my hands? Yoga. Yoga connects your mind to your body's movements. That's how you can get better at using your hands. You know, okay, what are my hands doing and what does that communicate? And how can I pay attention to them at the same time as making a point? We're gonna do one more of this. So really breathe in deeply, use the breath to make yourself feel good and also use this opportunity to practice mindful movement. Breathe in. And breathe out. Nice. Okay, does that feel good? Does anybody feel, think this is stupid or this is awesome? Does anybody have any questions about doing this stuff? I think it feels good. Yeah. Anyone else? Good. Eric says good. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So another one here we have is push-ups. Push-ups is great for developing that sort of muscularity. It's also just push-ups are such a great workout. If you just want to feel a little bit stronger, uh, if you don't quite have the strength to do full push-ups, you can do them from your knees instead of your feet. If you just do like 20 a day, you will just keep some strength in your upper body, uh, some muscle tone. Honestly, like push-ups are what I use when I can't go to the gym and I feel cooped up and I just do a few and it sort of makes me feel like I have some kind of strength in my upper body. It's good for your core. It's a great thing for um, uh, just to feel strong if you feel like you don't have a lot of power. And then finally, it's just stretching. Uh, and we can all do this very easily. You can do this at any time when you feel just a little bit not great. Grab your left wrist with your right arm like this, stretch it above your head and stretch over to the right side. Breathe into the side body, exhale to come back out and do it again. That stretches out your side. So these are very good exercises you can do. It keeps you fresh and limber and excited and energetic. Also, one final thing about physical exercise is that movement helps memory. There's studies done on this. You will remember more if you move while you practice your words. So if you're practicing for video content, move around, stretch, box, do all this stuff while practicing your lines, while practicing your words, and it will help you remember more. So now that we've done some stuff about how to make our performance good, now we talk about getting started when we're on camera. So we're going to talk about video hygiene. What are the basics of, of you know, as I said, I don't want you to feel like you have to have super expensive equipment, but we should have some basics to make sure that the video content you put out is not dismissed because it looks like a hostage video that you're filming from a bunker somewhere. That's the worst. So what are the good video hygiene uh, things that we have here? So I'm just going to get rid of this uh, chat box for myself. So good background, books, plants, art, etc. So if you notice here, I've tried to do that myself. I have art on the walls. I have some greenery behind me. I do have some books over there, although it's a little hidden right now. I, I lost some books on the shelf. All of this makes it look good. People think they have to have a plain background. I couldn't disagree more. It's so much more interesting, especially during this work from home time, to see some stuff behind people, to feel like you're somewhere in somebody's living room or somebody's uh, waiting room or somebody's home office, just something to kind of ground you and go, oh, I know where I am. Now I just want to listen to someone. And in general, if you're a thought leader or if you're presenting yourself as a thought leader by saying, you know, ideas and sharing them with people that this is a good kind of vibe to put out there. Lighting. I've got this like $20 thing. It totally does it for me. I'm probably gonna upgrade soon, but this is all you need. And I can post links to all this equipment later, but get yourself some front lighting. You know, the difference between this and this, right? So much more difficult to see my face. Now, all of a sudden, brightened up. You can see my features more. You can see everything. Very important. Decent microphone. I cannot stress this enough. How does this sound, Craig? Sorry, I did the light instead of the microphone. Does it sound good right now compared to what I was saying before? Craig, can you hear me? 
Yeah, it doesn't sound good. It, it sounds like you moved to. No, it sounds uh, good. Yeah. It's echoey. Yeah. You're using the, the speaker on your uh, notebook or something. Yeah, terrible. Internal microphone on the computer. AirPods are barely a step above that. But now listen to this. How much more do you want to listen to this compared to my vocal quality before? Yeah, so and much just more. think about the difference between so much more. And just think about the difference. Like if you go to hear somebody play guitar and their guitar is a crappy, uh, like, you know, $200, uh, what is that? Denver brand, you know, any, any guitar heads out there, they know Denver guitars are the really cheap starter ones that they start kids on. Uh, and then you get a beautiful tailor and the difference between the same guitar player and the same song on those different guitars is massive. And it's also just, we can hear the different tones in your voice. All the things that we, that we miss in person from people's voices, we can start to get them back a little bit with a decent microphone. I'm using the Blue Yeti. Craig, what's the mic that you're using right now? Yeah, this is the uh, ATR 1200, I think, uh, 2100. If anybody uh, emails me, I'll send is you the specs. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I have some recommendations as well uh, that I generally send out, but it's so important. Just make the investment. You'll probably spend 150 max if you're just getting a starter microphone, you know, but you can find a decent microphone for less than that, maybe 60, 70 bucks and just see the difference. I guarantee you it'll be worth the investment. Some more hygiene body centered in frame, just like mine is now, just like Craig's is now. So many people do this one, right? How many times have you seen this? You're looking up somebody's nose, their, their thing is down here, or they're like this for some weird reason. And they're like it, totally in a weird spot. They're kind of like this. It just looks so bizarre. And just think about how much better it is uh, as a shot, as a frame. If you think about um, being in uh, uh, like a documentary or a movie, this is just such a better frame. It looks so much nicer to the eyes. I've also thought a bit about where I want my plants to go and my books and my art, but this is just so much more satisfying to see. Camera at eye level, that's a, also part of the frame, right? You want to be looking, so it's looking like you're in your camera. Uh, you're looking uh, into people's eyes because you're looking in your camera. And right now, I have Craig and my faces on my Zoom call right near the top of my screen. So when I'm looking at myself or Craig, it looks more or less like I'm looking at you. It's, it's not perfect, but that's a good way to do it. Another great tip that comes from Mark Bowden is to put a smiley face uh, sticky note uh, just above your webcam and then it gives you somewhere to look so it looks like you're looking at people uh, and then have a clean desk you know right now I'm breaking my own rule because I kind of have a cup of tea and some other equipment that I was thinking of showing but it's just so much better for your mental health if you look down at your setup and you have a clean workspace I can't tell you the difference it makes for me just you may not think it matters but it really does uh, and so yeah Look at this guy. This guy uh, is a professional Zoom, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Zoom coach or whatever. He's been putting out some great uh, contact uh, content called Webinar Ninja. So I just decided to use a freeze frame from one of his videos. If you look here, he's got books in the background, makes him look well read, makes him look educated, whether he is or not. He's got some greenery, not enough in my opinion, but he's got a little bit going on there. He's got some art on the wall. He's got some stuff behind him. This is from the other angle. This person has a good webcam and it's at eye level, if you notice. Her camera is up there. I think this is also one of those 4K cameras you can attach, attach to the top of your screen. Those are fantastic. Uh, I'm ordering one uh, this week. Uh, she's got a good microphone. She's got a laptop beside her monitor, so she's got extra notes. She has a clean desk, if you notice. Uh, she's got some lighting going on. She's got natural light really important i moved my studio in here because there's more natural light it just makes the room look better uh there's a yeah as i said good microphone nice clean desk everything she needs really so i cover a lot more stuff about how to make this content in this thing that i've created called the video uh creation cheat sheet this is how to do all this stuff what to say I have all these topics here, how to write it, how to write this stuff, how to practice saying it in the ways that we talked about before, how to say it on camera. There's this video hygiene checklist here, some performance tips, and then how to edit and share it. So all this stuff, you can get it from me and I'll sh Craig, I'll share it with everybody when I send out the follow-up email here. But I just wanted to uh, cover a quick stuff about video hygiene first, because I think it's so important. And the rest of this, use it to just get yourself up there and start making content. 
Uh, so that's really all I have for today. Uh, so I want to send it to anybody else. I'm not sure what time we're at, that if anybody has any questions or anybody wants to practice their video content or their pitch, we have time for that now, uh, if, if indeed we do. That was great, Will. I appreciate it. And so now is the time. If you do want to pitch and get some feedback, you can actually put up your hand in the uh, participants window and we will allow you to talk this time. Um, and also, uh, if you just have questions, too, about the stuff, you don't have to necessarily pitch. If you're worried about that or nervous, uh, any questions, too, are also totally welcome. So uh, it can be anything, whatever you like. Just keep in mind, it is being uh, recorded and uh, it is on Facebook and will go up later. Yes. So. But don't let that stop you. Remember, just because it's going to be recorded and on the Internet, it doesn't mean it actually is scary. Uh, so unless you're worried about sharing IP or anything like that, I really encourage you to push yourself. Hop on here if you have a question, if you want some practice. It's a great way to start to get the nerves out and open the tap. Anyone? Hands up. And any questions for Will? I might so, call on someone if nobody uh, inter, uh, volunteers. Feel free. So let me ask a question. If I don't sure. know where to start with topics, like yeah. um, w uh, how do I get going with that? I think the number one thing to focus on uh, in terms of topics is the number one thing you should focus on as an entrepreneur anyways, is what are your customers' problems? If you make content about your customers' problems, what they are, first of all, identifying them very clearly and how to overcome them, then you are instantly providing the type of value that your service provides. So for example, if you help people deal with tax credits like Shred or something, if that's your company, one of their problems could be they don't know where the online resources are. So all you'd have to do is just do a Loom video or a screencast and say, hey, a lot of people ask me, they don't know where to go for, for, the, to, for the Shred online resources. So here's a quick screencast. So you go to here, you click on this page. I'm just going to walk you through it real quick. All of a sudden, that's an incredibly valuable, helpful thing. The more value you put out, and don't worry about sharing your IP. I mean, obviously, if it's really important IP, don't put intellectual property, don't put it out there. But just share your ideas, share your knowledge, share what you do. And I promise you, it'll be worth it. And don't do it selfishly, do it to help people. So the topic should just be problems that your customers have and helping them solve them. That's the basic thing you can start. Things that clients are always asking you, how do I do this? How can I do this better? What's the, what's the way to do this? Or highlighting a story of when you saw it work. You know, this was my client who couldn't do this. And then they st I told them to do this. They started doing it. And now uh, this is what they've got. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Think about your customers' problems and help them solve them with your content. Eric had his hand up uh, for a minute and then he yeah. put it down, so I didn't oh. know if um, Eric, he do you wanted wanna, to. Do you, wanna, yeah. do you have a question? Do you want to hop on or do you want to just write it in the chat? Anybody? We, we did this live with uh, Sean Weiss the other day for Elevator Pitch, and it was mm -hmm. great feedback for people. So I'm hoping we kind of get the same Yeah, I hope some again. people will, will, will give a pitch, but Eric says he just has a question. So yeah, Eric, please shoot. Are you typing the question or did you I want to? I believe he's typing it. Perfect. So while he's typing it, what's the, um, you work with a lot of startups and, yeah. you know, people ought to create uh, content. What's the biggest barrier you see uh, that you help people overcome? The, there's two, I think. Number one is they're not totally clear on, they think that there's a division between what their product does and what their content should be or could be. What I mean by that is they, they don't see that social media content can be part of, let, let's say, their product. That putting out helpful, valuable, problem-solving pieces of content, as I, as I suggested, is actually part of what their customers are getting from being associated with their brand. So they go, well, I have my product over here. This is what I do for companies. And social media is just a way to kind of get my face out there, get my name recognized. Uh, and I don't really want to post pictures of my dog or my breakfast. Uh, and I don't really want to like, you know, uh, show what I do all day. So I'm just not going to bother with it. But they don't see that by putting out what they talk about all day when they're talking to their customers anyways, like here's how you solve your problems. Here's how I can help you. Here's what you should do. Here's how you can implement this. Here's how you can get better at this. Here's how you can learn more about this. 
just putting that into video form is so, so helpful. So they, they don't get that connection first. And the second thing is they're just, they're too nervous. They don't have the confidence in their speaking skills or in their likability or, or in their ability to have the time and carve out the time to do this. So they don't bother. Uh, so I would say that, you know, just starting to think about the customer's problems that you help them with all the time that seem to get the best reaction from your customers. Like, oh, thank you so much. This was so difficult. You really helped me. And putting out a video on that is just so valuable. And the more you do it, the open the tap thing, again, I'm going to repeat this, you will build confidence. Because like going through it experi experientially is so important because you learn, oh my God, it actually doesn't matter when I put my first video out there. You feel so exposed the first time you share a video on YouTube, you're like, oh my God, I did it. Ah, people are gonna watch it and it's gonna be on the internet forever and uh. And then nobody cares. You'll be lucky if three people look at it, right? Nobody cares about you. That's the hard, sad truth, but it's also very liberating truth. Nobody cares. Put your video out, let six people see it, let five people be like, this sucks or whatever. Uh, or, and then let one person go, oh, that's kind of cool, keep it up. Don't worry about comments, don't worry about stuff like that, just practice it for your own sake. So I would say that will both build confidence and it will start to also teach you what content your market finds valuable. So the more content you put out, the more you see how people react to your different stuff, then you go, oh, people seem to really like these types of videos. I'm gonna double down on those. Uh, and that, that's really, really important for understanding your market too. You can do customer development. You get a sense of what people are interested in. It's really great. Uh, okay, Eric, uh, I think we have Eric up here. Says he can't turn on microphone or video. Oh, Craig, you're on mute. Sorry, and he's gone from the participant list, so I think something happened. So oh, comes... sorry, Eric. I, I, uh, oh, he's, I... he's, he's back. Okay. Um, <laughs> does anybody else... Oh, here, I think he's coming up. If anybody else uh, wants Hello. a chance to pitch... Hey, Eric, welcome. Um, okay. <laughs> sorry, I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah, I, I now can talk. That's okay, uh, no problem. I don't have video, though. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Uh, I just want to yeah. point something out to everybody. Uh, it's so great to hear your voice, Eric. As soon as I heard your voice, and I'm sure everybody feels this way, we start to get a picture of who you are. And we're like, oh man, Eric, uh, he sounds so nice. He sounds warm. He sounds enthusiastic. But we are missing the second part of that uh, image, which is your face. So I would say as much as possible, try to get on video. But of course, it's fine for right now. All right. Thank you very much. So I, I have a question like uh, at the start, like uh, when you talk about the content, uh, mm -hmm. are you talking about uh, just the video content or you talk uh, also like uh, the, uh, creating like a web blog as to, you know, some way to introduce your idea with people? Yeah. Uh, so I think, so here's my, my thought about this. Video is the highest return on your investment. Video gets the most attention, it gets the most engagement, it flags the algorithm as high quality content. So anything that's a video, the algorithms of the social media uh, platforms will go, oh, this is high quality, it bumps it up a little higher, bumps your accounts up a little higher. So for in my opinion, if you're going to mm -hmm. work on any one of them, video is the best. However, if you're a good writer, and you really like the way you write, but you don't like the way you speak, then then try doing a blog as well. But don't do it instead of the video. Also, you know, Instagram, Twitter, that can be great as well in terms of, you know, just getting your thoughts out there, your ideas out there, your images mm -hmm. out there, especially mm -hmm. if you have a visually appealing product, right? Instagram mm -hmm. would be great for that. Um, you know, but in general, I recommend YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and IGTV for videos. Focus on that. And what you can do too, Eric, is mm -hmm. you can record a video, then you can get it transcribed by mm -hmm. rev.com or by transcribers. And you can just put that out as a blog post. You can mm -hmm. just put out the words from your video. Video is called alpha content because from video, you can make a podcast from the audio. You mm -hmm. can make a blog post from the transcript. Uh, you can even take a screen grab for Instagram or you can take a single quote for Twitter. Like there's so much you can do from video. So creating video is the best uh, thing to focus on because from there you can do so many uh, uh, other types of content. So, you know, you don't even have to write a blog post or make a podcast. You just take the audio and the written word. Okay. Thank you. I was wondering that, you know, as you mentioned on YouTube and all those places, I, I never did that before, honestly speaking. Mm -hmm. So I, I was wondering then I post something there, who's going to watch it? Like, how can I get traffic from? People? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think, you know, uh, you the YouTube algorithm for you to be recommended obviously takes a long time. But what you can do is put a video up on YouTube and then use that as an opportunity for content on your other channels. Mm. You can put in your Instagram story, just posted a new video on YouTube, go check it out, link in bio. All mm. the ways of cross promoting your stuff on your different channels is really great. Then what's so great about building up a YouTube channel is uh, Eric, what business do you do? I actually want to do an education uh, website, you know, also not just education, it helps people, uh, especially young people, students or young professionals to be able to learn the technology, learn a new mm. knowledge, um, you know, when they have a question and they can connect with each other to answer the question quick, even before they Google, they, they, if they know in the same domain, they can quickly maybe respond to each other. Right. That's, that's awesome. I really love that idea. So what would you say the big idea about your business is? Would you say it's kind of like peer to peer learning, something like that? No, the big idea is that I'm going to uh, build a website that it's like a virtual extension to any website. So, okay. so when, when you, for example, you, you, in my website, you point to a web page, right? And then you will be able to see that who are the people also visit the web page. And then uh, they may, you can you both connect by this web page because you both right. visited this page and you know about your question and you know probably Great. okay and so you have some common background sorry eric i'm just gonna yeah, uh, sorry sure. to cut you off but i just yeah. just for time's sake that's great that's fantastic so we're hearing a lot about how your thing works but i want to boil that down into the big idea so the big idea you can think about something the big idea like this the big idea like this is uh, for your company should be something like this. The old way of doing something is this, and this mm -hmm. is why it doesn't work. My okay. new way is going to change everything and make it so much better. Oh, so right. what is your new way? What is the, the, if you can say it in a few words, a couple words, what is the new way of learning the new way of education that you're proposing? What's new and different about it? Okay. So the old way is people have questions. They will go on like a, Quora or any place, mm -hmm. ask the general question. The new way is that when people ask questions on my web page, people already have a common background of the knowledge, what they are talking about. And now they just need to only to answer the question and okay. not try to understand back. Great. So Eric, your job is now this. Figure out all the specifics of this idea and start to make videos on it. Mm -hmm make videos on why the old way doesn't work. Okay. Make videos on how COVID-19 is impacting education okay. and, and how that connects to your new service. Okay. Make videos on the problems with current metrics, analytics on websites and how your solution's gonna change that. Mm -hmm. Make videos on why uh, your target market has this problem that they, that they go to a normal website and they don't uh, they don't mm -hmm. know who to talk to or the person they ask doesn't have the background. So mm -hmm. your job is to start to extract all this content mm -hmm. and then just make little videos and the videos can be screencasts. As I said, that might be great because you're talking about a technology online platform. So you mm -hmm. can, you don't even have to show up at first. Although I do suggest that if you're doing screencast, as I said, because of face, body and voice, it's mm -hmm. great to have your image there, but mm -hmm. go on the website right now, go find a website that's not doing things the way you're doing that has a problem and go say, Hey, look at this, look how difficult mm -hmm. it is to find this or look how inefficient this is, uh, or look how, um, uh, look how much better this could be. And then just show your market their problems mm -hmm. and their solutions mm -hmm. and then start to make those videos. Then when anybody hears about you mm -hmm. or finds you online, they can find this channel and they'll go there and they'll say, okay, what is Eric all about? What is his company all about? Mm -hmm. So it's not that you necessarily want to build up a bunch of users just for the sake of a YouTube channel. It's that mm -hmm. you have a place where when people want to know about what it is that you think about your business and what it is that you do, they have mm -hmm. a place to go and you don't even have to say anything. They just go mm -hmm. to your YouTube channel. They have an hour of you talking about your ideas. And mm -hmm. then by the time they come to talk to you, you've already done half the work to sell them on your idea because they know a whole bunch of stuff. You don't have to spend an hour on each phone call telling people your mm -hmm. ideas. Does that okay. make sense? Very Mason. I okay. thank you so much because Fantastic. I'm trying to launch. I really want to find some marketing guys. You are encouraging me that I should be the marketing guy. I should yes. be first. 
You are the founder. It's your idea. Put yourself yes. first. Everybody should do this. I hope everybody hears that and everybody's listening. Put your own face, voice, body, ideas, your story. Eric, tell, you know, one piece of content. Tell people mm -hmm. why did you have this idea? Where did you get the idea? Do you have kids that are having this problem? Uh, you know, are you a teacher? Are you like, how did you come here? How did you notice the problem? Tell us your story, you know, uh, uh, introduce us to who you are and why you care about this. The more you do that, the better your content will perform, the, the better you'll pre-sell your clients. It's just, there's so many benefits to this. So yeah, get out there and do it. That's that's right. Thank you. You're and welcome. one more uh, one more piece of advice for you, Eric, is yeah. obviously you need to focus on why context and perspective is important. Um, you know, things like why would you would you ask a 10 year old uh, where the best place to eat this is? Or would you ask, um, I don't know, a yoga instructor on questions about football or I don't know, I'm just throwing random stuff up there. But you could have a whole series about that because specifically you're talking about someone who is asking a question from your context, from your background and wants an answer in that way and why it's important. So think about those things. Great. And Thank sorry, you. just for, sure. for time, because I know we're almost yep. at time here, um, but I wanted to ask Jennifer, I see Jennifer Reedy's on the call and I'd love to ask her because I, I know that she told me that she has, hadn't been making content, uh, content before and she's just started. So Jennifer, if you're there and if you're willing, I'd love to have you hop on and just talk about the, those first couple steps of this experience that you've had. Are you willing, I, Jennifer? If she's able. Okay. And hey, Jennifer, and for everybody hey. else, I'm just, uh, I'm putting my Calendly, uh, which is where you can book a, fo a phone chat with me. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to uh, put that in the chat so everybody can get that. And then uh, I'll be right with you. Sorry, Jennifer. Jennifer, so nice hey. to have you here. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming here. And and uh, yeah, is, is that cool? If you can kind of speak to everybody and tell them what your recent um, content sort of journey has been. Uh, yeah. So I have put off and put off doing any sort of content online other than just posting, you know, things on Instagram like pictures on Instagram, not even of me, but just, you know, the things that are on there. Right. And so then I sort of started watching your stuff and got a little confidence from it and the warm ups and all that. So there was an opportunity to um, be on a local podcast. I'm a therapist. And so, you know, it's a therapist interviewing other therapists in the area. Mm -hmm. And I did it and it was not as bad as I imagined. It, it went better than I thought it would. Right. And so when you were about to do it, did you have like crazy butterflies and, and nerves? Were you really, really nervous to start speaking and to, to appear on this thing? Yes, very much. I did the warm ups, which helped a lot. I also prepared the day before, just like right. Luckily, they gave me the questions so I could kind of prep a little bit. And so right. I mapped all that out and had everything ready to go. So that helped. But yeah, I was totally nervous before. And then you, and then you went through this experience and realized like, oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Definitely. Even after I was like immediately done, I had an idea about it. And then when I went back and actually re-listened to it, it was better than I thought I had done at the end of it. Amazing. I said things that I didn't even remember saying, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I often have that experience when I do one of these things or do a podcast and I listen back to it later. I'm like, Oh, that was a pretty good point. I didn't right. even, uh, yeah, I didn't even think I thought that or something. Uh, and that's another thing that I think about opening the tap is important is the more you just kind of go Bleh, with your words about your business and about your topic, the more you actually get better at thinking about it. There's a famous Oscar Wilde quote, which is, how can I know what I think unless I hear what I say? And the idea about that is just speaking out loud, which is one of the things we talked about today, is so helpful. So by you going on that podcast, you took a step of going, okay, I'm going to clarify my ideas a little bit, not just for other people, but for my own, for myself. By speaking out loud on my topic, on my industry, on my area of interest, I'm clarifying in my own head a little bit more what I believe, why I do the work that I do and who I do it for. Do you feel that that happened to you when you when you did that? Definitely, I think the process of going through and answering the questions for myself so I was prepared definitely helped me kind of distill my ideas and beliefs down into 
you know, bits that I can express in a more coherent Amazing. way. So the next step I would say is start to search these out now. Uh, go search out podcasts that you think you'd like to be on. See if you can find the contact information. Go on LinkedIn. A lot of people post their own podcasts on LinkedIn. Try to find those people. Uh, say, hey, if you're ever looking for a guest, reach out to any colleagues or friend of, uh, friends of yours if they, if they have a podcast and, and kind of invite yourself on as, as politely as possible. Uh, and then eventually uh, start your own because there's nothing better than having your own platform. You get to control what you talk about and when you do it and who you have on it uh, to a certain extent. So I'd say those are the next steps. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk soon, Jennifer. I'll, I'll be in touch. And, and thank you for being back here. And, and thank you for everybody who came. I know I want to respect everybody's time. And I know we're a couple minutes after the, the end time. But uh, if anybody has any more questions, I'm happy to stay here and answer them. Uh, and uh, otherwise, as I said, if you want to talk to me more about the powerful pitch workshop that we run, uh, uh, or if you just want any help, I'm, I'm totally happy to hear about how you know, what you're up to right now. If you want any help, uh, just want to discuss your pitch, want to give me your pitch feedback. It's totally free. Uh, this uh, Calendly link will, will help you book a 15 minute phone call with me. So if there's any, if there's any questions, I'll answer them now. And if not, um, Craig, I'll, I'll send it back to you. I think you covered most of everything and uh, people do get a little afraid when you talk about uh, speaking live and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. And don't <laughs> feel bad. And, and, you know, anybody, if you feel like you should have talked and you didn't, don't feel bad. Don't beat yourself up. Just just next time we're going to do another one of these in a month. Uh, and also any other Zoom thing that you can become a part of. There's tons of pitch competitions going on right now. I'm seeing them all over the place. You don't have to be in the city anymore. Uh, our, our, one of Craig's and mine's former clients just won a Houston pitch competition. They're based in oh, Toronto, yeah, wow, yeah, you know, that. it's like, you don't even, there's so much out there right now to be that you can do online. So all of this stuff is great practice. Put yourself, uh, up there, uh, just put yourself out there either through content or joining these zoom networking meetup things or these pitch competitions and just start to open the tap and, and get all that water out. And then, uh, it'll just be, I, I promise you, it'll be so worth it. And here's an insider tip. We're probably going to be allowing people to pitch to the audience during investor speed dating because we'll have a crowd in the in the open room and you'll be around. So uh, that's November 11th. It's not posted yet. I'm waiting for the last investor, but that'll be uh, free pitching time. So if you're interested in getting some feedback, it's probably a good time to do it. And thank you again, Will, for everything and taking the time. And one yes. more time, for those who aren't watching and are just listening, where, if they want to find out more about you, where do they go? Uh, you can go to outloudnow.com to see our website. You can follow me at Will Greenblatt, G-R-E-E-N-B-L-A-T-T. -E -E so that would be on LinkedIn, uh, on Facebook, and uh, on Instagram as well. Our YouTube channel is called Out Loud Speaker School. I've really started uh, doing what my advice that I gave to Eric and starting to put more of my content on there and then creating a kind of a, a channel where people can go see all my ideas and stuff and uh, all, uh, yeah, all the sort of uh, things that I talk about and teach about. Um, June McDonald says, thank you. Awesome. As always. Thank you, June. Thank you for being here again. And, and, and just, yeah, thank you for everybody for taking the time. Um, yeah, you can find me on social media. You can go to the website and just in general, um, you know, reach out to me on social media because I'm, I'm always happy to have a chat to, to, you know, have a, a, a quick phone call or a zoom call and just talk about what you're going through. So please feel free to reach out to me on, on any of those platforms as well. Thanks again, Will. Thanks for everyone for showing up and thank we'll you see you again soon. Take care.